Hello everybody! Thank you for selecting this video. I hope you will enjoy the subject that I have presented to you today. Hello, I want to talk to you this time about uh, a very special case working with very large JSON objects. Uh, you may get them from external scent and even as Iris has a very excellent uh, support for JSON objects named dynamic objects or dynamic arrays, uh, you can run rather fast into serious problems. The problem typically arises when you hit the maximum string length. Uh, and on the other hand, if you are working with large objects, uh, navigation through them and searching, investigating is sometimes a very cumbersome uh, exercise. So the idea is to load JSON objects or dynamic objects into a global and then run to the global and see what you can do with the content, see why the content is probably not what you expect, and do also various manipulations. But this is especially thought to be used for searching problems, searching for data inconsistencies and other similar issues. I start the demo here in a command line session using an Iris session and the assumption is that the Docker image is already installed and running. So I connect to the Docker command, getting into an Iris session. So I have my user. And the first thing to do is uh, to define the file names for the demo. Therefore, we need to use the data directory. You set the data directory. Enter to see what the content of this data directory is. We run the on this directory oops too much kicking so and you see there are two JSON files prepared by the package one is a small one to demonstrate the principle working and the other one is a little bit more than 6 megabyte. 6 megabyte means it's far beyond the maximum string length. No matter how you do it, it is too large just to put it into a string. And the special feature here that I use is to load a dynamic object into a stream. There is uh, the, the object as such is described in the documentation. It's just not really clear how to use it. And that's what I want to demonstrate to you. So, let's start with the demo file. I set the file name. And then I start my loader for the global. This is my demo class. Dot. J. 
JSON to and we use the method file Come on JSON to global dot file and the input is my file name and I've loaded this in the variable demo. And it's done. What happened now is the, the default Clover that we used is named JSON. So if I do a set right of my default global JSON. I get this global structure that contains everything that I had in the global. You may of, of course want to see what, what is the content of, of the file as such. Uh, yeah, uh, you, you have it in the description, is a rather dirty string, but I can demonstrate it here as well. Uh, how it is used. So I set my variable GS as a dynamic object and load it from JSON file and pass my file name as a parameter. Now if I do it set right of my JS, this object is already loaded, which is indicated here, but it's very hard to read. So instead I use set set my personal command zzjson gs and now you can read that it, it looks much more attractive so to repeat it this is the, the input content and the right This is the output. And you see you have all the fields, you have it, all the labels as subscripts and the content, well, as the global content, what else? This is the basic operation. The real important part is to use it with a big file. And you have seen before in the directory the big six dot json file is we have it here not yet def defined <coughs> I set the file name big equals Data directory and the name file name is big six dot json. So I kill my I kill the json object to it was just here for demo purpose write my local variables so so the next the next thing we want to load into the global is this big six the six megabyte JSON file and what I do is basically the same that I did before 
All right, my class, JSON to Clover, file. The file name is now big. Add, okay, yeah, let's let's name the global also big. To have it in a different global and not to touch our initial demo global JSON. So, and it's taking a little bit of press and it's done. Okay. Uh, here we have screenshot of the source file and you see here, you cannot read it there uh, and neither can I do it. Uh, it's just huge. You have the beginning and then you see here the end and uh, the idea to navigate by any tool tree it is uh, well it's let's call it ambitious to give you a feeling what's uh, the sizes i just list this cover is that right and our global name is Big. Well, and here we go. If you read the, in the doku, you will see this uh, now containing roughly 250,000 nodes that we have generated. You recognize that the first number is uh, are 250 sub elements and a few other entries as well so it's enormous but now you have it cut into small pieces and it's in fact the principle how do you eat an elephant cut it in small pieces that's the way and that's the way that I suggest here, since with any other tools, it might be possible. I'm not an, an that big expert on JSON files, but this one is the common, the more natural way to work with these globals, with these large data sets in Iris. I hope you have enjoyed it. And I would suggest you try it yourself. The container is there. You can download it from, from GitHub and you'll see it runs immediately. Okay. This was the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was interesting to you. And I hope you will see me again with my next video on this channel. Goodbye.